Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Swartz, and we're now going to demonstrate an example of a focused history and a focused physical examination. Good morning, Mr. Stern. I'm Dr. Morning. Swartz. Hi, Doc. I'm going to be the doctor taking care of you today in the emergency room. Okay. Please tell me the reason you came in today. I've just been having this chronic stomach pain. Uh -huh. And could you show me in your abdomen where it is, please? Yeah, it's like right by the belly button here. I see. And how long have you been having this pain? Uh, I've been having diarrhea and the stomach pain for the past three months. Three months? Yeah. Um, so then what was the reason you actually came in today? I saw some blood uh, mixed in with the stools and I got scared. Wow. Uh, I can understand that. That's pretty scary. Um, well, I'm glad you came in today and we're going to do our very best to figure out what's going on and, and make you feel better. Right. Can you tell me a little more about the pain? Uh, well, it's sort of like uh, cramp. It's a, like crampy, and it and it kind of comes in waves. And I also just feel bloated uh, in my stomach uh, all the time. It's like gas is there. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything that makes the pain better? No. Is there anything that uh, makes it worse? Uh, I don't. I mean, maybe anxiety. Uh huh. Uh, is there anything that's happened in your life that's increased the anxiety in your life recently? I guess my job uh, is perhaps a bit stressful. I mean, I don't really get along with my bosses very well. Mm -hmm. What type of work do you do? Uh, legal assistant. How long have you been at that job? Uh, close to three years now, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Are you happy with the job? Not particularly. I mean, I don't mind it so much as a job, but I feel like I'm ready to move into other areas. I see. Getting back to the pain, uh, on a scale from 1 to 10, with 10 being the worst, um, what number would you put on the type of pain that you're having? Uh, differs maybe like from a 5 to, say, 7. Mm -hmm. And that's about the way it's been in the past few days? Yeah. I see. Um, how does the pain actually affect your lifestyle? Well, it's, I'm able to go to work, but I'll, I'll tell you the truth, it's it's very difficult because I have to keep going, making excuses and go to the bathroom. Sure, sure, I can understand. Um, tell me, when you have the pain in your abdomen, do you have any pain in any other part of your body uh, at the same time? No, I don't think so. Okay, have you noticed that anything makes the pain worse? Uh, Maybe perhaps when you're hungry or maybe after meals? No, I mean, I, I, it just kind of comes and goes. I don't, I don't think it's related to anything I eat. I see. Are you having pain right now? Not so much right now, mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'd like to ask you some questions about your, your diarrhea. Um, can you describe it to me? Well, the stool is uh, it's kind of loose and, and, and sometimes watery. And, and again, uh, today there was blood in it. Mm -hmm. Was that blood in the toilet bowl? No, it was just kind of, I guess, kind of wrapped around the stool. I see. Uh, about how many times did you did you see that blood? Uh, three times. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed any mucus in the stool? Mm, yeah, it's uh, kind of stringy. Mm -hmm. Is the stool formed or is your bowel movement mostly liquid? Uh, it's not formed, no. It's... Mm -hmm. I guess liquid. Liquid. Yeah. And about how many times a day do you actually have to go to the bathroom? Well, for the past week, it's been like eight to ten times a day. Mm -hmm. I see. Have you noticed if the stool floats at all? No, I don't think it does. Does it smell strange? No. Mm -hmm. Doc, uh, do you think that I have cancer? Well, it's, it's really early to say, Mr. Stern. Um, why are you concerned about cancer? Is there anyone in your family who has cancer? No. Okay. You know, you're a young person and it is unlikely, but there are many things it could be. So I do need to ask you some more questions. I need to do a physical examination. I also need to do several other tests and then I'll be in a much, much better position to advise you and see. But you uh, are a young person and there is no cancer in your family. And I think there could be many things it could be. So let's, let's proceed if we can with some of the questions. Have you had any fever with, with this problem? No, I, I don't think so. Okay. Have you noticed that any milk or milk products seem to make uh, your diarrhea worse? No. Okay. Have you noticed that any wheat or oat or barley products uh, make the diarrhea worse? No. I mean, I love bread and wheat. I, I, don't, I don't think it's done anything. Mm -hmm. Do you drink alcohol? 
hardly ever. I mean, maybe a, a couple of beers over the weekend. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit more about the abdominal pain. Have you had that in the past? Uh, well, I first noticed that I started having the, the stomach pain along with the watery diarrhea about 15 months ago. 15 months ago. Uh, what happened then? I was traveling with a friend in Central America. Mm -hmm. Did you have a nice trip? Yeah. yeah. I mean, except for that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then did you see a doctor at that time? No. I see. Um, did you take any medications at that time? Yeah. Uh, my friend gave me some Pepto-Bismol and Imodium for uh -huh. the pain and, and the diarrhea. Did it help? Well, the pain went on for another three weeks or so and then, uh, you know, eventually it went away. Did you take any other medications? No, I mean, I've been in good health otherwise. I, I really don't have any other problems. Mm -hmm. Have you had abdominal pain in the past? Well, um, n it stopped for a while and then the pain and the diarrhea came back about three months ago, but, but the diarrhea was, wasn't watery. It was just that it was very loose. Mm -hmm. Have you seen any other doctor about this problem? Yeah, I saw a local doctor about three weeks ago and he gave me some antibiotic for it. Do you remember the name of the antibiotic? Was, um, yeah, it was Flagyl. Uh huh. Uh, did it help you? No. I mean, I, as a matter of fact, I feel like it made it worse. So I stopped mm -hmm. taking it after five, six days. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any nausea? No. Any vomiting? No. Um, tell me a little bit about your diet and what you would typically eat. Uh, well, I think my diet's okay, but uh, frankly, lately I haven't been very hungry because of the, the stomach pain and the diarrhea. Mm -hmm. Has there been any change in your weight because of this diarrhea? Yeah, I'd say I've lost maybe five pounds in the last month or so. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your parents' health. My mom is about 54 now and she's doing real good, but uh, my dad Died about 15 months ago. Very suddenly, he had a heart attack. Uh, he was 56. Sorry to hear about your loss. Thanks. Do you have any siblings, brothers or sisters? Yeah, I have an older brother. He's 31. He's doing fine. Great, great. Um, do you use any recreational drugs? Maybe once, twice a month, marijuana. Mm -hmm. Anything else? No. Okay. Do you have any allergies? No. Okay. Are you sexually active? Yes. Um, are your partners male, female, or both? Uh, just women. Uh, actually, I've uh, been living with my girlfriend for about eight months now, and everything's great. Great. Good. Do you use protection? Yeah, always uh, condoms. Okay. Well, Mr. Stern, I have a few other questions that I'd like to ask you. They may seem kind of unrelated, but they, for me, they're important to, to ascertain the answers. Um, do you have any uh, problems with your eyes? Uh, yeah. I, when I was about 19, I uh, was in college, I uh, had iritis in my right eye. Mm -hmm. Tell me about it. Uh, well, it just had real bad pain. Uh, it got very red. Saw the eye doctor and he gave me steroids to take for about four weeks. Uh, I also remember that I had to wear protective sunglasses because the light was really bothering me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess I, I got better in about three weeks. I made sure I took all the medication because I didn't want it to come back again. And thank God it didn't. Great. Great. Well, you did the right thing by taking the medicine and for the full uh -huh. period. That, that's good. Um, do you have any history of back problems at all? Yeah. Uh, kind of my lower back, I've had some problems with, I'd say, since I was like 21. Uh, I think it came from bowling. Do you bowl a lot? I used to, yeah, quite a bit. I was uh -huh. on a team. I see. Are you still bowling? Not much anymore, no. Okay. Did you see a doctor when you had this back pain? No. I just uh, took some aspirin, Tylenol, that seemed to take care of it. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Stern, have you had any sores or problems uh, in your mouth, like ulcers or anything like that? Not really. Any problem with urination? No. Uh, any, any rashes, any part of your body? No. Any chest pain? No. Any shortness of breath? No. Okay. Um, I think you've given me a lot of information, and I'm going to begin the physical exam in, in just a moment, but um, is there anything else that you'd like to share with me before I begin the physical exam? 
No, any, I think that's it. Uh, okay. Any other problems that you're having? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to begin the physical exam in just a moment. I'm just going to wash my hands and we'll proceed. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks. In speaking with Mr. Stern, there appear to be several important diagnoses. Inflammatory bowel disease, irritable bowel syndrome, traveler's diarrhea, pseudomembranous colitis, celiac disease, and giardiasis are certainly in the differential diagnosis. The history of iritis and low back pain makes the diagnosis of inflammatory bowel disease a strong possibility. Inflammatory bowel disease is very common in the United States with an annual incidence approximately 3 to 10 new cases per 100,000 people. Extra intestinal inflammatory manifestations are also common. Ocular manifestations occur in 5% of patients with inflammatory bowel disease and ankylosing spondylitis occurs in 5 to 10% of patients. The most common extra-intestinal manifestation is a peripheral large joint asymmetric non-deforming arthritis. This occurs in about 20% of patients with inflammatory bowel disease. Our patient does not have this medical problem. Genetic disorders seem unlikely since the appearance of this patient's problem started at age 27 or 28. Viral or bacterial gastroenteritis also seems unlikely due to the apparent chronicity of the problem despite the travel history 15 months ago to Central America. Salmonella, Shigella, and Campylobacter enteritis are generally associated with fever and are short-lived infections from three to six days although Campylobacter may cause a more protracted diarrheal illness. Antibiotic-associated colitis, or pseudomembranous colitis, is unlikely since most of the symptoms antedated the use of the recently prescribed antibiotics. Colorectal carcinoma is also unlikely due to the history and this patient's age. Giardiasis is still a possibility, but it is low on the differential. Most patients with giardiasis exhibit a malabsorption of diarrhea and lactase deficiency occurs frequently in about 20 to 24% of patients. Our patient denies milk intolerance. The regular use of condoms in a heterosexual male makes this diarrheal illness less likely to be AIDS-related. Diarrheal illnesses and malabsorptive syndromes can occur in as many as 50% of patients with AIDS. Malabsorptive syndromes are common. They are characterized by defective absorption of fats, fat-soluble and other vitamins, carbohydrates, electrolytes, minerals, and water. Although chronic diarrhea and flatulence are common in malabsorptive syndromes, the hallmark of malabsorption is excessive fecal fat or steatorrhea. Our patient denies floating stools a symptom of steatorrhea. Celiac disease is a chronic disease, but this patient's lack of sensitivity to gluten makes this diagnosis less likely. Vascular disorders are unlikely due to the age of the patient and the lack of other medical conditions. Based upon the history, the physical examination of Mr. Stern should include general appearance for signs of wasting and jaundice, inspection of the skin for rashes, inspection of the mouth, Evaluation of the abdomen by inspection. Light palpation of the abdomen in all four quadrants after auscultation. Deep palpation of the abdomen in all four quadrants. Percussion of the abdomen. Evaluation of liver size. Rectal examination and evaluation for fecal occult blood. And evaluation of sacroiliac joints for tenderness. After performing these physical examination maneuvers, you should be able to narrow down and or confirm the most likely diagnosis. Always cast a wide net to obtain the most information. You can always narrow down your differential diagnosis. Well, Mr. Stern, we're going to begin the physical exam right now. The nurse has taken your blood pressure and your vital signs and they're all normal. May I just see your hands for a moment? Mm -hmm. Okay.
Okay, you put your hands down. Just look at my eyes. Fine. Open your mouth for me, please. And say, ah. Ah. Okay. All right. Would you lie back for me, please? Putting your arms down like that. May I bring this up, please? Mm -hmm. Okay. And may I just bring these down a little bit? Okay. Okay, lift up. Okay, fine. Can you just point with one finger where it hurts? Right in here. Right around the belly right button. Around here, yes. Okay. All right. Is, do you have any pain right now? No, not right okay. now. Okay. Okay, just going to examine your abdomen. You tell me if there's any tenderness. Okay, any tenderness here? No. Here? No. Here? No. Over here? What about here? Mm -mm. Here? Here? Mm -mm. Here? No. Okay. I'm going to press a little bit harder. You tell me if there's any tenderness. What about now? Any tenderness here? No. What about here? No. Or here, mm -mm. or here. How about if you put your legs up a little bit for me, both legs? The other one also? That's fine. Here, mm -mm. here. Any tenderness here? No. Tenderness here? No. Or here? Okay. 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 Any tenderness here? No. Take a big breath in through your mouth. Big breath in through your mouth and out. And again. And out. One more time. Good. And let's do that here. Big breath in and out. Again. And out. Okay. Good. You can put your legs down for me. Good. And now if you sit up for me. All right. Any tenderness here, Mr. Stern? Not really. And here? No. What about here? No. Anything here? No. And here? And what about here? No. Well, thank you, Mr. Stern, very much. Uh, you've given me a lot of important information, and your physical exam has been very important as well. And what we're going to do now is to take some blood tests, and then we're going to take a few x-rays of your abdomen. And I should have the results of all of that back in about an hour and a half or two hours, and I'll be back to discuss the results with you at that time. Okay. Okay, do you have anything else to share with me? No, I think that's it. Okay, and we're going to see what we can do to make you feel better. Great. All right, sir. All right, thank Bye -bye. you, Nice Doc. to meet you. Same Bye -bye. here. It's a difficult task to perform a good focus history and physical examination. It requires an excellent knowledge of physical diagnosis, pathophysiology, and epidemiology in order to hone in on the important aspects of the patient's medical problem.